My name is Alan Holub. This video is a very short excerpt from a much longer class that I do on the subject of microservices. In particular, I want to look at a subject that a lot of people are interested in, which is how to break up a big monolithic program into a bunch of small cooperating microservices. How do you extract functionality from a big program and turn it into a smaller program that interoperates with other smaller programs in order to get work done? Now, this is not nearly as easy as breaking up a bar of chocolate. You have to do things gradually. And in this particular video, I'm going to look at one technique for that. That technique is called the strangler pattern. Now, first of all, strangler is not this kind of strangler. It is that strangler is a fig vine. The way that the strangler vine works, the way it lives, is that it is a parasite. It gradually encompasses a large tree. It grows around a big tree. And over the course of several years, not only does it grow, but as it's growing, it's gradually killing the tree that's underneath it. So what you're seeing here, this gorgeous lattice work, is what's left at the end of the process. The tree has died and rotted away long ago, and what's left is this beautiful lattice work that surrounds it. So that's what we want to do with our monolith. We want it to gradually die off and be replaced by a set of cooperating microservices that do everything that the monolith used to do. So to see how to do that, let's start by looking at the monolith itself. A monolith is made up of various pieces. They could be modules, they could be packages, they could be subsystems, but usually there's some kind of organizing principle inside of the monolith. And of course there's a database, a giant shared database that everybody in the monolith uses. These pieces, these modules, have complicated connections to each other and they all connect to the database. Notice, however, that some of the modules connect to each other indirectly through the database. In other words, they will be talking to the database uh, simultaneously or at different times. But the point is, is the database is effectively a global variable here, which means that it's not a great, a great uh, design <laughs> feature of our monolith. Now, we want to put in microservices. And the way to do that is we're going to start with the exterior paths into the monolith. These might be API calls. They might be uh, pieces of the UI. But there are ways that people talk to the monolith from the outside. I'll put the microservice onto one of those paths, and then I will take one piece of functionality out of the monolith and move it into the microservice itself. Now, notice that when I did that, I also had to create a database inside the monolith, or inside the microservice, rather. As microservices are standalone things, they have to be completely deployable on their own without having to worry about deploying anything else. Well, if they shared the database with the monolith, they wouldn't be able to do that anymore, as they wouldn't be standalone things, they wouldn't be deployable. So they must have their own database. We have two databases, though, and they have to be in sync. So the next order of business is that we will add a program called a data pump, the sole purpose of which is to keep the database and the microservice in sync with the database and the monolith. So whenever something changes on one side, it's going to be reflected on the other side. Now, usually this is a standalone program. It doesn't have to be. It could just be the clustering system associated with a couple of databases. But the database in the microservice might be completely incompatible with the database in the monolith, in which case you're going to need some kind of program that you write to keep the two of them in sync with each other. The other thing I have to say is that this data pump strategy is not going to work very well if you're doing this with, oh, even 20 or 30 microservices all at the same time. It works fine if you're doing them one at a time, if you're doing it very gradually, but if they're doing it with a lot, you just get too many conflicts after a while. In that kind of situation, you might want to think about putting an API onto the monolith, the purpose of which is to just keep the databases in sync. So in this case, the microservice talks to the API, and the API is implemented inside the monolith to keep the database in sync with what's happening at the microservice level. Let's assume for the moment, though, that we just have one service, so we'll go back to our data pump model. Now, once that microservice is in place, we can start gradually removing the dependencies between modules inside the microservice itself and replace them with API calls to the new service. In other words, all of the internal dependencies that uh, we're probably giving us grief inside the monolith become uh, well-defined API calls to the microservice itself. Bear in mind that these API calls are temporary, is that all of the connections between the monolith and the microservice are temporary connections. They just exist so that we can do our transportation, so we can do our porting from the monolith out into the service itself. So we can gradually get rid of the dependencies that are internal and replace them with API calls to the microservice. As the microservice evolves, um, more and more of these API calls will probably be added to it. And eventually, though, we'll end up with a system where the microservice is talking to the monolith purely through a set of well-defined API calls. Now, once that happens, 
we don't need the database any, database pump anymore because everything that has to do with the data associated with the microservice is now in the service. There isn't any data on the monolith side that is microservice related. Instead of going to the database, in other words, the monolith functions will talk to the microservice across this well-defined API in order to get the data that it needs. So that's one service pulled out. It still has connections to the monolith, but those gradually get replaced as we add additional services. In other words, the new service is going to talk to the old service, and if it does that, then the connection between the monolith and the old service is no longer necessary because we have two services talking to one another. And gradually, that's what will happen, is that we'll add more and more microservices to the system. The microservices will communicate with each other, and every time we get a communication path between one microservice and another microservice, we tend to eliminate the uh, dependencies between the old monolith and the services, and eventually the monolith will just cease to exist. So that's the strangler pattern. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch. I'd prefer that you did that on Twitter because that way we can have a public discussion about the issues so more people will benefit. And of course, if you'd like me to come in and teach my microservice class for you, I am happy to do that. Uh, get in touch with me by email or Twitter or even give me a phone call if you want. Thanks.